Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Masoud Olia, and I'm a professor in the School of Engineering at Bentford Institute of Technology. And I'm here with a problem related to the uh, subject of mechanics of material and uh, to the topic of combined loading. Okay, so let's look at the problem. And I'm going to get rid of my picture. Sorry, guys, stop the video. All right. So here we go. So that's in my iPad. Sorry for the noise. So here we have this uh, sign, <clears throat> which is subjected to uniform wind loading. So you see the wind pressure is uh, 1.5 uh, uh, kilo Pascal, acting over a sign of one by two meters, right? And we have to obviously convert that to a force so we could see the effect of it in this section. Section is where three meters below the sign, right? And uh, we're interested in look at four points and try to figure out the, uh, the stress component. The stress component means what? Means sigma and tau. So basically we wanna find the normal stress and shear stress due to this wind pressure uh, at this particular section at different points on different axes, okay? So you have to understand guys that the, um, this section is not a critical section actually. The bottom is uh, the critical section where the stresses are maximum because the moment, bending moment is gonna be the maximum and as, as a result, the stresses would be the largest, okay? So let's go ahead and start this problem by saying, okay, first of all, uh, we're going to change this to uh, a resultant force acting at the centroid of this uh, rectangle. So what would be this resultant force? This resultant force, basically, if you look at the, um, I'll put it right here, so we have room on the need. So if you take, let's call this 1500 Pascal, right? And Pascal is what? Pascal is Newton per meter square. So I converted the 1.5 kilo times 1,500. So we need to multiply this by the area to convert that to the force. The area being a one by two. So we're talking about a two meter squared. Therefore, we end up getting 3,000. Newtons. So the resultant force right here is going to be 3,000. So let me put it as 3,000 right here. Right? So that's the effect of the overall effect of that uh, wind pressure. All right. Uh, ready to now look at this section. So I'm going to kind of enlarge this uh, section for you. Right? So this is basically uh, this solid post, solid shaft. So this is the bottom here, right? And this is the uh, x-axis, let's say, and this is the y-axis. And these points, as you could see, point A is on the x-axis somewhere here. Point D is here. Point C is here. And point B is here. All right, so how do we uh, look at the internal forces and moments at this section? So we wanna see what would be the effect of this 3000 Newton force acting at the center of this sign, right? So the easiest way guys is to just move the force as you see it, or forces. In this case, we only have one force to that section. So I'm gonna start with moving this force here, and I call it 3000. And what would be this force? Uh, it would be a shear force actually. So I call it a V of 3000 Newtons. And this is a V in the X direction or negative X direction. You can put the subscript here if you want. But the direction of it actually would be, uh, is not important. Well, it is important in when you do try to combine the effect of the transverse shear and the uh, shear stress due to twisting. 
Now, as you transfer this load to this section, you have to watch out for what? What kind of moment this force is creating about this section, right? So notice that the 3000 times this distance, right? Which is actually one meter, half of two, will give you a moment about Z axis. That is actually what? 3000 times one, that's 3000 Newton meters. And what is that? That's actually your torque, right? So, and how is it rotating? It's gonna rotate like this. So this is your moment about Z axis, which I, which I call it the twisting moment. But at the same time, this force multiplied by this distance, is going to give you a moment about y axis, that distance being, be careful guys, there is a half a meter here, because it's half of the one, right? And then you have a three meters here, so that would be 3.5. So there is a moment about y axis of 3000 Newtons times 3.5, that's 10,500 Newton meters. And what would be that moment? Let's see if you can draw this for you, that moment, will cause stress like that. Why am I having it like this? Let me show you, there's a solid color. Sorry guys. Still the same thing, I guess. Oh, it doesn't matter. Here we go, that's moment about y-axis. Let me actually get rid of this, put it in black. See, what would be the effect of this green uh, bending moment? It will put point A in tension, so Make a note for yourself. So A would be in tension and C would be what? In compression, right? But point B and D are what? In terms of the bending, effect of bending and stress. Point B and D are on the Y axis. So they are on the neutral axis. So they don't feel anything. They will feel zero stress. All right, so you see here, we only have the effect of bending moment, which will cause, uh, give us normal stress. So we could have had an axial load too. In other words, if you had a load somehow like that, which would transfer it here, it would cause compression, or if it was up, it would cause tension, but we don't have that. All right, and then, uh, so we have the, just the twisting moment, the bending moment, and the shear load, that's it. So that makes our job a little bit easier. So for, for in terms of the normal stresses, guys, let me set it up for you. Sigma at A, we'll look, go like this, sigma at B, sigma at C, and sigma at D. So you see here, we already know sigma at B and D are what? Zero because of the fact that B and D are on the neutral axis or on the Y axis. But this guy would be what? Moment about Y times C divided by I sub Y. A, we said what? Intention, positive, and C would be exactly the same thing in compression. So you could go ahead and calculate your I sub Y. I sub Y is just uh, moment of inertia, but Y axis for a circle, you know that moment of inertia is pi over 64 diameter to power four, by the way. Diameter is the solid shaft of 100 millimeters. So you could go ahead and calculate this. I'll just put it in the formula. Be careful that 100 meters should be changed to, uh, changed to 0.1. So go ahead. Plug in, uh, we have 10,500 times uh, C, C is what? C is the distance from the neutral axis to point A. So that would be this distance or to point C, which is the same thing. So that C is always for a circular section is the radius. So that, that would be 0 0.05, half of 0.1. Divided by this I, which you can calculate it on the side or just plug it in as I'm doing. So this comes out to be actually, uh, I have my calculation here, 107 megapascal. So therefore this stress becomes negative 107, the stress, normal stress at, uh, you know, point C, because it's exactly the same magnitude, but in compression. All right, the shear stress would be a little bit more interesting, guys. Let's take a look, take a look at the shear stress, you see, Due to, so let me draw this picture. Uh, so let's say this is your x-axis, kind of, this is your y-axis, right? 
So point uh, A and C are on the x-axis. So, so what did I say? Sorry, guys. I said this is the x-axis. I wrote y. So uh, I changed that to x axis and I have point A here, point C here, D, e, and B. All right. So here's our torque, right? What does this do? Creates shear stress like that, maximum shear stress like that, maximum shear stress like that. You see the directions? Like that. And that tau for all these points are the same at A, B, C, and D. Maximum on the outside, right? Equal to what? T, C over J. So they are the same thing, right? But you see, what would be the effect of shear stress due to the transfer shear? Let me draw another picture for you here, right below this. Let's go to black. So you see our shear load is in what direction? It's in the X direction, right? So if this is the X and this is the Y, you see this is our shear load, which was in the negative X direction, right? So you guys know that the shear stress here on the top fiber would be zero in the bottom fiber would be zero. This is transfer shear. And the tau, which is the, the, the general formula is what? VQ over IT, right? For a, a circular, solid circular cross section becomes four third V over A becomes a simple equation. And I have a video on this, which will show you what's going on. So look at the way shear stresses are acting. So at point A and C, shear stress is zero, but it reaches a maximum value here at the middle in the direction of V, right? So for point D and B would be maximum. But the problem is, or not problem, but you see in at point B, it's pointing up. And at point D, also pointing up, which means for point D, you add the uh, four third V over A, right? This is point D. And for point B, you subtract. See that? Because the directions are in the opposite direction, right? All right. So here we go. So. By the way, I didn't say what J is. J is always um, moment of inertia, and it's about, in this case, the z-axis, which is half, twice i, which is pi over 32 diameter to power 4. So if you go ahead, let me actually calculate this on the side. So Tc over J by itself, remember the torque was, uh, twisting moment was 3,000, right? Times, again, the radius. 0.05 divided by j, which is pi over 32 diameter to power 4. If you calculate this, this comes out to be about 15.3 megapascal. And if you go ahead and calculate the transfer shear, 4 third V over A, which is actually coming from this equation, but only for a solid shaft, right? 4 third V, V, remember, is uh, 3,000, right? Right? That's the shear load over area, area is pi over four diameter squared. This actually very small compared to the other one, roughly 0.4, a little bit more than 0.5 megapascal, half a megapascal. So basically tau at A is just 15.3, tau at C is just 15.3, right? Megapascal, because the shear stress here due to transfer is zero and zero, but here you add, the 15.3 to 
to uh, or subtract 15.3 from 0.5, so it becomes 14.8 megapascal. And this one you add 15.3 to 0.5, so it becomes uh, 15.8 megapascal. Okay. And if you want, I can even draw a stress element for one point to show you what's going on. So if I if I could redraw this for you here, kind of larger. So remember, this was this is point A basically here, right? This is your point A, and this was the x-axis. This was the y-axis, right? So just for point A, guys, you could look at it as a volume element if you want. Um, so for point A, you see what you have is due to the bending moment, m sub y, this guy, this guy is, you have a stress that going in this direction, right? Sorry. And of course you need one to balance that. That's the 107 megapascal. And then that would be actually, if you want to, call it the sigma sub z because that's in the z direction, obviously. And then your shear stresses, how would they look like at B? Well, what was the magnitude? It was 14.8. The dominant direction is the direction due to what? The TC over J. So you see how that is acting uh, for point A down? So let me use a different color. So that would be a shear stress that is going down like right? on that back side, right? And then it would be looking up here and in this direction and in below. Remember the shear stresses must be equal. Maybe I should show you a two dimensional stress element makes it easier. So if you just look at the front face of this, uh, this is this 107 megapascal in the Z direction, right? And then uh, you got shear stresses here this one, this one, this one, and they have to be equal as you know, and that's your, uh, that's the tau at B, which the one that we subtracted 14.8, right? So basically now you have your stress element, right? And then you can go ahead and do uh, principal stress as sigma one, sigma two, and tau max, right? So, uh, have video on uh, stress transformation and so on. Okay, guys, hope you like the video as always. If you like the video, please uh, 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 you know, uh, subscribe to my channel. I, I just distracted myself uh, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.